Hey, and welcome to Sound Painting a Saturday, episode number 27. Thanks for tuning in. I'm your host, Evan Mazunik. And uh, as you know, every week this year, I'm putting a sound painting video up. And my audience uh, for the first half of this year has really been someone who's coming to sound painting for the first time and wants to learn, how do I start to work with this language? How do I sink my teeth into it? And I was really planning to introduce people to a lot of the language that I consider really basic and helpful and have a broad application. So if you're in that position and you're really hungry to learn more about sound painting, from here on out I'd recommend you go ahead and check out Walter Thompson's workbook on sound painting. I'll include a link to his uh, website below in the description below this video. And if you're coming to this series for the first time on this video, I'd recommend go ahead and check out the first 26 episodes of a lot of basic sound painting language. But based on the comments and uh, feedback I've received and the interaction and conversations I've had, uh, from here on out, I'm gonna treat this series more as a uh, continual think tank where I'll share ideas and bounce ideas off of you. And I'm, my audience is really those people who've worked with sound painting for a few years, have some experience under their belt, and are hungry to learn some more about the language or to try out some ideas so from here on out, we're really going into uh, uncharted waters. I'm going to throw out some experimental ideas. I'm going to try some things. We may fall flat on our face, uh, but I'm really excited to uh, take the second half of this year and treat it really as an adventure in sharing ideas. And uh, again, a caveat, a lot of this stuff is stuff that I've tried out with my group and has worked with my group, but is new language and is uh, not necessarily sort of the King's, uh, King's English on sound painting. So. I'm so excited that you're here uh, along for the ride, and I want to continue from here on out to the end of the year to share some new ideas and some new concepts and uh, see where we go. So, a bit of a change here in the sound painting series. So, today I really want to work with something uh, in the spirit of the think tank, and for those of you who are at this think tank, I hope it went well. Uh, look forward to uh, the next one I can make. and. It, this is a gesture I presented last year at the Think Tank and uh, got some good feedback from, but it's working with tempo and specifically with uh, a cello rondos and retards, so being able to speed up or slow down. And what I'll use for that, the gesture for tempo, and I'll go like that and I'll break that T, or I'll bring it up here. So if I want the ensemble to slow down on their own, I'll step up into the box, I'll do that, and that launches immediately a gradual and gradual ritardando, poco a poco. The speed at which I do it is going to indicate how poco, in a sense, how quickly or suddenly. So this would be a really sudden slowdown. This would be a bit more gradual, and this would be super gradual. And then the same thing for an accelerando. So to speed up, this would be poco a poco little by little, this would be a bit quicker, and this would be really... Suddenly, the ensemble, on their own, goes and goes and goes and speeds up until uh, it reaches the point of breakdown, or I might step in, I might say, watch me, you know, tempo, and set a tempo. Maybe even stick it, for those of you who uh, work with stick. So again, or so try it out with your groups, let me know how it goes, and I really look forward to your feedback, to your comments, to your questions, to your emails. Uh, you can find me on Skype to emazunik, E-M-A-Z-U-N-I-K, and I'll talk to you next week.